everybody. We're continuing our series here, another episode on the Christian life and those things that are really important. This one I'm going to talk about today is very important. In fact, you could say it's the main reason we're breathing on planet Earth today as Christians. That argument can be made. Here's the verse to start us off. It's going to mention a very familiar word to a lot of us. Paul the Apostle says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God, the gospel is, that brings salvation, changes everything for now and eternity, to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Do you know that word? Gospel. It means good news. It's the good news about Jesus Christ. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it because that pure, true gospel message, when spoken by the, with the help of God in love, people then hear it, open their hearts, and believe. And now eternal destinies change. Now, it's interesting that at the end of his life, after he rose from the dead, Jesus, in both the end of Matthew, for example, in the first chapter of the book of Acts, the last things he talked about was, go into all the world and preach or share the gospel. Let's not analyze yet what it is, but share the gospel. You will be witnesses for me, he said, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and you're going to spread the gospel. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of that gospel. Now, gospel has gotten into our vocabulary, so it's a genre of music. You know, gospel music, southern gospel music, black gospel music. There's gospel awards. But what is the gospel? I know I didn't hear it, even though I went to church as a kid. I wasn't sure what the gospel was. It was kind of a nebulous term, what God, Jesus, something, church, I don't know, something in there. So let's talk about that, because the calling on all of our lives is to share the gospel. Let's get to that premise I started with. You can say that the reason God doesn't have us home yet in heaven is he's kept us here for one main reason, to share the gospel so others can hear and know salvation through Jesus Christ. No, you're into Bible study. Listen, no matter how much you study, you're only going to see through a glass darkly. It's, it's going to be a little blurry. But when we see him in heaven, oh, we're going to know everything. Are you into praise and worship? I am into Bible study and praise and worship. I love it. But we're just playing with it. These are like little bubbles that we're, we're dancing around with. When we get to see him face to face, read the book of Revelation if you want to read about real praise and worship. So it's good we do that. We study the Bible and, and all those things have their place. But the main reason you can say we're here and time is running out before Jesus returns, we have opportunities to share the gospel. But what is the gospel? So this is the only episode I'm going to have where I'm going to give you an assignment. You have for the next month, here's your assignment from the pro professor. I want you to read and study, seriously, every message in the book of Acts. Acts 2, Acts 3, where Peter, the apostle in those cases, preached the gospel. I know it's the gospel because when he got done, thousands entered the church, were baptized, entered the kingdom. And then again in Acts 10 at Cornelius' house. Acts 13 with Paul when he's on his first missionary trip. And then Acts 21, 22 when they almost kill him in Jerusalem and he shares the gospel. Just analyze and parse every sentence. What's the subject? What's the verb? What's the object? Because that's the gospel. Paul warns us that even back in his day, there was another gospel, another Jesus. What was that about? It sounded like the gospel, but it wasn't the gospel. It talked about Jesus, but it wasn't the Jesus he told them about. 
So if we're going to share the gospel, let's share the one that has power. Notice what he said. I'm not ashamed because it, the gospel, not the preacher, not you, me, it's the gospel that has power to change people's lives. So you'll find out as you study that, that there's been additives and subtractions over the centuries. That a lot of times people are not being converted to Christ because we're not preaching the gospel. It's not that their habits are too strong. It's not that the Satan has so much power, put, someone put voodoo on them and all of that. No, no, no. The gospel is the power of God. We're talking God here, folks. Power of God. No, but we've added something to the gospel. I'll give you just a few examples. Come forward today and join the church and receive the right hand of fellowship and put your trust in Jesus. No, that's not the gospel. Now you've added church membership. There's nowhere in this book where anyone asks anyone to join their church. No, 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 it's not there. It's not just not there. There's no charismatic Pentecostal gospel where they're talking about the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues and all of that. I have all the gospel messages here. I'm not that bright, but I've studied them uh, uh, very carefully. There's no mention of those things. Are those things valid for a discussion? Yeah, but that's not what's going to change anyone's life. It's the message of the good news. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. Repent of your sins, be baptized, and you shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. But study it for yourself. Don't believe me. In fact, that's a good rule. Don't believe any preacher. Don't believe your pastor or preacher when they're preaching, except with this uh, one thought in your mind. Where is that in the Bible, what he's saying? The Bible is the acid test, especially now with the gospel, because now we have a southern gospel, southern white gospel, right-wing conservative gospel. We got a liberal gospel, black gospel. We got every kind of gospel. But what's the gospel? It costs God his own son to give us the gospel. Don't you think we should take time to find out what have we added or subtracted? For example, repent of your sins. Jesus died for sins. So a lot of churches don't preach the gospel because they don't mention sin. Just look, follow your dream. God loves you. It's kind of nebulous. And just, you know, be one with us. You don't have to become anything. Don't, don't have to change anything. Still sleep around. Do whatever, do whatever you want. Don't worry. God loves you. Everything's good. You won't find that in the scripture. And there's a lot of warnings about those who preach another gospel. Paul says in the book of Galatians, let there be a curse on anyone who adds or subtracts from the one true gospel. So you say to me, what are you telling me? I'm, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. That's the point. That's not how the early church grew. Read it when you get a chance, Acts 6, 7, and 8. Here's what happened. Uh, Stephen was a deacon, but he started to be used by God and he was preaching the gospel and a lot of good stuff was happening. They persecuted him and finally stoned him and killed him. And after he died, a great persecution rose against the church in Jerusalem. And the Bible oddly says that the apostles stayed there, even though Jesus has said, go into all the world. They stayed there, the leaders. But everyone who was persecuted lost their jobs. Families were being under threat now. They went everywhere. They just scattered, it says. All the Christians, thousands. But it says this, everywhere they went, they proclaimed the gospel. No, you mean they got up with a pulpit? No, that's not what proclaim means. Proclaiming doesn't mean preaching an oratory like a minister. It means sharing in a conversational way. Look it up. They shared the good news of Jesus, God's love, Christ's sacrifice, the cleansing of sin, the return of Christ, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the gospel, the good news. They, you could be born again. They shared that. So what do we have here? Sheep reproducing sheep. What would happen to your church or mine if all the sheep started reproducing sheep? Now, we've made it a spectator sport. The guys up there do the work. I sit there and watch. If I like it, I might come back. 
If I don't like it, I don't know. I've got to find a church with a shorter service. This thing's getting too long and prolonged. No, our calling, all of us, is to share the good news. You can do it on the phone. You can do it in person. You can pray that God would lead you and give you an open door to share it. There's no greater joy. Listen, the angels don't rejoice when we have praise and worship. They're in another meeting that makes what we look, look like a day in Coney Island. They don't rejoice when we, when we study the scriptures, as wonderful as those two things are. But what does scripture say? The angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner, when one person rebelling against God says, I've had it, I believe. Let's make heaven happy today. Let's ask God to use us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Blessings on you.